All right, one of the files James Moore has to deal with is Canada's broadcasting industry. And right now, Canada's broadcasters are in big trouble. I mean, right here, you got the CBC facing a budget shortfall. It's $170 million this year. Global is strapped for cash. CTV is threatening to sell or shut down local stations. All three are cutting staff and programs, and everybody's blaming the economy. As it started to struggle, so did the broadcasters, because advertising dollars are drying up, and the competition for what's left is fierce. But the problems actually go back further than that. Over the past 10 years, more and more people have turned to satellite TV, specialty channels, YouTube, podcasts, all of which has taken money away from the big broadcasters. And now, well, they say they can't afford to keep producing quality Canadian content. Not that everybody is producing Canadian content. So they want the government to help. In March, the Heritage Minister announced a new program, the Canada Media Fund. This is about modernizing government investments to support Canadian content in the new era of consumer choice, emerging technology, and investing in Canada's future. Ottawa plans to invest nearly $135 million a year to boost content for other platforms beyond conventional TV. But is that enough? Should the cable companies, like let's say Rogers or Bell or Shaw or Coach, go whoever your business is, should they have to pay a fee for carrying a broadcaster? signal. You know, there's also talk that Ottawa is preparing to fund the private broadcasters up to $150 million, a bailout, if you will. Everybody, please welcome the Minister of Heritage, James Moore. Thank you, man. Welcome to the program. Pleasure. How are things? Things are very well. Very well. It's always great to be here. It's good to have you. The, uh, Tough times in this industry. Uh, I mean, heritage covers so many different uh, areas, obviously, but certainly in the broadcasting business, that's where it gets most of the coverage because that's what the media is. Um, could you have foreseen that it would be this uh, this reality? Well, it's difficult. I mean, simple stat: the average Canadian watches uh, 26 hours of television per week. Under the age of 25, it's 12 hours per week. There's a massive shift going on in the industry, and as the industry itself is trying to figure out what it's going to do, the government looks at this and tries to think what's the best role for the government in all of this. Um, even the CBC, about a third of the CBC's revenue is a little bit more come from ad revenue, obviously not on the radio side, as you said uh, in the opening. So CBC has its own challenges, all do. The biggest part of the problem in analyzing the issue and the subject itself is that is to try to make a determination between what's a cyclical problem, ad revenues, and what's structural, which is the migration of voters into online content and choosing different platforms on which to consume media. So, and in watching all this, you know, broadcasters and, uh, and content providers are all trying to find what is the best way to meet new audiences. And by the way, you're, you deserve credit in your show leading the way. Uh, you know, this show is what the top video podcast almost in the world on iTunes. Um, CBC has led the way. It's, it's a remarkable success that you've had. And uh, and I think it really is, to be honest, I'm not just saying this because I'm sitting here, but it really is a standard that a lot of privates should be setting and looking at and trying to find a way to monetize um, because it's going very well for then you. Then why didn't you give us the money? <laughs> <laughs> we have. Of course we have. You know, we have. Uh, we'll come back to that. Well, no, we'll come, we'll come back to that. What I want to ask you is, well, you mentioned the government's role, and I'm curious yeah. about it, is uh, with this particular government, with you as the cabinet minister, what role should the government play, in your opinion, in the arts in a country? Well, with regard to broadcasting, and answering your semi-last little jab there, is that the role of the government is to support the creation of Canadian content. It's this conservative government conservative government that is spending more money on the CBC uh, than ever before. We made a campaign commitment in both elections to maintain or increase funding for the CBC. We've increased funding for the CBC in every single one of our four uh, budgets that we've put forward. And then outside of that, we also have a responsibility to support the creation of content. We've done something called the Canada Media Fund, uh, which is which will reward the creation of Canadian content on multiple platforms. Um, so you have shows out there that would be available online or through memory sticks or through traditional mediums. Um, and that's the job of, I think that's what Canadians want from the government. While the provide are deciding what's the best way that consumers are going to consume things. They want the government to support the creation of Canadian content. The government is coming back uh, again uh, to the CBC. I don't want to make this conversation just with the CBC, but today is no. the day that you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. Pink slips yes. went out today in this building, uh, and a lot of people look at the government's role in it saying they're asking for more cutbacks, including another $50 billion, you know, uh, million. Dollars. Yeah, well, that's, that's what's been coming out. There's, there's more true. cutbacks and more. And when the bridge financing was asked for, um, the bridge financing wasn't given. The question I had for you is, did you want the, did, did you support the idea of the bridge financing being granted? to the CBC and then you went to your you know, to your party and, and that they said no. Like, what was your stand on? We, we, had, a, we had a discussion about it. There were a number of options um, that were put forward and what we just basically flat decided to do was rather than have bridge financing, do what we did in the budget, which was to maintain our campaign commitment to increase funding for the CBC. You talked about the $50 million that was described. Um, that's, a, that, that's an exercise that all government departments, all government agencies have to do. What we do is we ask, um, in this case the CBC, identify the 5% of spending that you're doing that's the least effective and you at the CBC 
tell us how you're going to reinvest that most effectively as possible. And it's, an, it's, an, it's a valuable exercise. We're working with the CBC on this, not against it. With regard to the job cuts, of course it's sad you know, if, when, when people lose their jobs. Nobody wants to see that. But the Vice President, Richard Sturzberg mm -hmm. of CBC, said even if the government extended a loan to CBC, they were still going to have to lay off at least 800 people. This was a choice by the CBC. had nothing to do with government funding. The uh, stories that have come out uh, saying that there's talk about CTV uh, and CanWest getting uh, shy of $200 million uh, in, in money. Uh, is that something your government is prepared to do? What do you stand on that? Uh, no. Uh, we're looking at uh, possible options to help all industries uh, in this country. And that obviously includes the broadcasting industry as well. But it goes back to the very first thing we were just saying, which is it's very difficult to find out what is cyclical and what's structural. And at this very moment, this month, um, as all the broadcasters are undergoing license reviews at the CRTC, um, it's very difficult to try to gauge what the honest truth is about their situations. So you're not con you won't consider giving the, uh, the, the private broadcasters a bailout? Not, not, a, not a bailout, uh, but obviously there are, there are a number of issues that are at stake. There's part two fees. Uh, you know, they've, they've continued, made the, the argument there needs to be support on the transition to digital CBC as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're considering all those things. We're through the license review process. Everybody has a one-year license. And, you know, going forward, we'll, um, you know, keep paying attention. So the big debate right now is about local TV. People think local, local news services are going to be taken off. Local channels are going to be going away. Um, does the government have a plan what you're going to do with that? I don't have that concern. Um, there's that concern that exists out there because of the reality of the 4A channels that, uh, that went dark um, on, uh, from CTV. But I actually am not concerned. I think there's a great deal. Local newspapers are doing, vel doing very well, but there's a transition going on. You know, I gave that stat about 26 hours versus 12 hours for, for younger people. There aren't very many young people, I, I find, uh, people under the age of 30, say, um, who have a great deal of concern about the future in terms of where technology is going. I think we're really enthusiastic about it. It's natural for a government. It's natural for the public to be concerned as we go through these transitions. It happened with uh, the invention of the steam engine, the, the, the electricity. It happened with the development of the personal computer and what that meant to old industries. So while we certainly are concerned about the loss of jobs and the transitions that going, are going on in technology, um, the opportunities out there are far exceed that, especially for Canada. Educated, thoughtful population, we're forward-leaning, and we've got great opportunities ahead so, of us. So what do you say then to the broadcasters like CTV and CanWest who say that if they don't get this money, they'll lose those channels? Well, they have, many of them, made their own business decisions. Um, and it's not taxpayers' fault if some of these people have made business decisions that have put them in jeopardy. But again, our job as a government um, is to make sure that Canadian content is supported, that there's as much choice and opportunity out there as possible, um, and is not just to you know, run wildly into the woods trying to find you know, which tree do we want to prop up. Our job is to support Canadian content and to look enthusiastically to the future, which is what we're doing. Supporting Canadian content is one thing. In terms of television, in terms of primetime Canadian uh, programming, there aren't a lot of options. I mean, mm -hmm. CBC is obviously 100% primetime. It is the public broadcaster, so it, it does that. But does the government look at, at Canadian content and say, you can put all the money you want into Canadian content, but if you don't air it somewhere, if people don't get to see it, what's the point? Yeah, and obviously that's, in my judgment, uh, the role of the CBC is to be a pan-Canadian platform, multimedia platform, for Canadian content in both official languages across this country. And the CBC has done a, has done a very good job of that and con should continue to do more of that. How much Canadian content, there's been a lax, of course, for this year's one-year license renewals by the CRTC. Um, but there's great Canadian content out there. And I actually, I'm not a pessimist who thinks the CRTC has to regulate this, or the government has to muscle broadcasters to show Canadian content. Some fantastic shows out there, some incredible Canadian creations. Something that boils down very basically for people is jobs and keeping jobs. And one thing that, and that's why I think the CRTC bears some responsibility here. When, when the regulation was changed um, and multiple ownership was allowed in the way it was, and these few companies were buying up all of the smaller companies, it's certainly the broadcast world, everybody with a half a brain knew that that means they were just going to lay people off. This was going to be an amalgamation. They were going to shut down and people were going to get laid off. So the government knew that this was going to happen. It wasn't you at the time, but people knew that this was going to happen. Is, this, is what's going on with CTV and CanWest um, and other companies an, an example of how Maybe we need to change the way companies are allowed to own media in this country because, like the auto industry, they're big. And when they become too big, there's too much at stake and too many people can lose their jobs. Yeah, and it hasn't been reviewed in over 10 years, so it's certainly something to consider. I know that in, on Parliament Hill there's a great um, interest in having committees study that. But I would also say, you know, I think you're looking at half the ledger. The other half of the ledger is online content, new media, and the stuff that's out there. Never more, there's never been more diversity of choice and content, of opinion and, uh, and, and opportunities for people to listen to what they want to watch, when they want to watch. It's, there's never been more diversity. Um, and so, the, again, the role for government is to ensure that there's a Canadian component to that, and which is why we're doing what we're doing. Do you have the same, um, do you have the same view of this as your party? 
And because, because anytime somebody spends more and more time inside a portfolio, they gain a new understanding yeah. of what the reality is. And I wonder when you, when you go to the Prime Minister's office and yeah. you say, here's what I want. I don't want to upset. Well, the, the Prime Minister gets it, in part because his son, um, Ben, is 13. And so he's involved in the new media. He's in that universe and he's, he's consuming things. And, um, I'll say this uh, gingerly with my colleagues in all political parties. The average age of a member of parliament, I believe, is 53. And I think for a lot of Canadians, a lot of Canadians, they have this concept that if I watch television, it means sitting on a couch and turning on the tube. If I watch a movie, it means going to a theater, buying or renting a DVD. If I watch or I listen to radio, maybe it's in the car, or maybe I um, listen to, to a portable device, um, or music, you buy a CD and you listen to it. All those things are collapsing into one. I mean, in my pocket, I've got my iTouch. Mm -hmm. And not only do I have you know, your show, video podcast on there, I've got music, I've got U2 concerts, I've got documentaries on there. Did you pay I've for them or did you download them I illegally? Paid, I pay for everything. I pay for everything. <laughs> Oh, believe me, yeah. believe me, <laughs> believe me, I, believe me, I, 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 paid for, I paid for everything, but of, course, but of course your show, York Show, which is available free online for folks. Right. So. Yeah. When, um, back, again, because it's, because it's something that affects so many people's jobs here at the CBC, when, the, when you were approached for bridge financing, did you recommend to the Prime Minister to approve it or to not approve it? Uh, it was, it was uh, part of a discussion, but the ultimate discussion was that we would go ahead and sustain our campaign commitment, which was just to increase funding for the CBC, which is what we've done. So is that a no? You can't answer it is what you're saying? Well, as, 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 you, as, you, as you can appreciate, my conversations with the Prime Minister and conversations at Cabinet uh, will always remain confidential. This is certainly going to be an ongoing discussion. Come back again, please. I'd be honored. Good to talk. Next time we'll talk motorcycles. We'll, we'll talk motorcycles. You too coming to Toronto. I'll yeah. be in town for that. It'll be a great time. It's a great city, great time. There you go. The Minister of Heritage, James Moore. Thanks for being here. <laughs>